Mate, can you take us inside that moment at the end of the game? Everyone danced together. What was that feeling like to be in the middle of all that? Mate, we started the game. Our, our whole concept about this week is, you know, letting our ancestors know that um, we're here to represent our communities. Communities, everything. Culture first. I said family, and then footy. So, for everything that goes on in our day-to-day -day lives, um, for this one week, you know, we get to carry it out for the whole 12 months and, and be proud of who we are and uh, on both sides of the spectrum. You know, Maldives, Indigenous All Stars. So. It's a big part of who we are and our identity, but it's a, we take up a big percentage of rugby league and NRL. So and now um, this is you know this is the game and this is where we're growing it. Um, I think you know it's heading in the right direction. So very very proud, um, proud of my teammates, my boys, my brothers, my family, and um, yeah, we've got to represent tonight. So. You got a, um, <laughs> 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 Gee, well, <laughs> powerful, eh? <laughs> you got a bit of ice on your knee there. How'd you pull up after the game? Yeah, mate, good. Just, uh, just you know, a bit of wear and tear, a bit, of, you know, bark off. But other than that, I'm ready for Vegas. So. Um, Gago came and got you pretty early there. Um, what was it like playing against him? Yeah, it was good. Uh, me and Gag, just, you know, we always have that you know competitive battle, and we're always swearing at each other. But off the field, it's um, we're back, and you know, I, I had a great relationship with Gags over the period, and he, when he was at South and when he left, so you know, that's never going to change. He's a competitor, I'm a competitor, and we just love the game just as much, all right? So, you know, any time we're scruffing around, that just that just shows, you know, that the love is in the game, and uh, we'll just leave it on there, and that's that's what makes people come into watch you know so you know, for gags get me on that and I thought oh, yeah, I'll have to pay him back here so I don't put Fox in the corner so why not so. Right. Um, Ron there are a couple of bumps and bruises do you know if everyone pulled through alright? Yeah they're fine. Great. Yeah. Latrell it seemed like a pretty um, fun thing that at one end of the spectrum you've got players like yourself Nico Hines absolute superstars at the other end you've guys, you have guys who aren't even on NRL contracts do you think they've played their way into consideration for you know maybe professional football? Oh, of course mate this is a platform for people that aren't or even considered in NRL, um, you know, development squads, whatever. But um, this is a great game for our development of our boys in their cultural experience and also their footy. And I hope that teams and NRL teams and uh, the programs there, and they can see that they're putting effort in, they can see like they're 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 there to play. So I think you know, for anyone on both sides of the ball, um, you know, if, I'm pretty sure they've played the way into a team, and I hope that um, you know. Team see that and NRL programs and um, definitely top 30 spots are short. Yeah, that's this is what the game's for. So you know, yeah, Joshy Kerr for a great example, Shaq Mitchell, look at him now. You know, so there's, a, there's definitely a, you know a pathway there. So I think you know, put more uh, get NRL to put more into this and um, develop this game and, and make it what it is and make our community stronger. Um, we'll go a long way to developing better players and, and making this game stronger for the future. Can you give us your thoughts on the two players, Kyle Labart and Kieran Mosley? Kieran made uh, honestly just um, unbelievable all week. He's been, you know, that little, you know, little leader, and um, you know he's probably you know, most capped now, and he's probably out of, you know, the past. He's last lasted the longest out of everyone, not in a um, NRL system, but just to come in and do what he's done. Um, yeah, I'd sign him any day. But um, Kyle coming in, finding who he is, um, very proud of him being vulnerable, putting his walls down, and this is what this week's about. And I um, can't wait to see him in 12 months' time when he's uh, a bit more stronger and, and passionate and finding his DNA. And um, this is this is it. So I can't wait for that. Well, it's back to back for the first time since the Maori became part of the concept. What have you sort of built from last year and this year, and how much has it has it grown? Oh, I think. Uh, Full credit to Laurie um, when he was the coach a couple of years ago. I was, I, I was his assistant coach, and um, you know I spoke with Laurie. I thought that we needed to change our uh, the cultural aspect of the program, and Laurie embraced that. He was open to it. Uh, we probably didn't change it enough that first year, but he gave us the opportunity to build on it. And I think over the last two years, like we've totally reinvented this camp and what it means to to be an all star. Um, you know we've got some some fantastic ideas that we want to uh, we want to float. And we believe that it could be the evolution of, of this game and um, you know different things within um, the game to to develop our, our next crop of players coming through um, and then find more games for this team uh, at the end of the day that they're in camp for one one week we build them up co you know culturally socially emotionally they walk out of here stronger um, and it sets them up for the year but we also believe that there's a void at the back end of the year when they've been with the clubs and it's an opportunity for us to regroup and maybe do something else so yeah, the plans are afoot. You know, we need to to talk to the powers to be and and you know take this opportunity to to build off what we've got here. We've got something special. I reckon um, 
you know, from day one we spoke about that this team would, you know, this program would be etched in history. Um, and, and I think moving forward, that's something that we're going to do long term. Mm. Latrell, the 15.3 thousand fans in the stands, despite the pouring rain, could you reflect on on that? You know, the show out from from the fans, and then maybe if you'd like to bring the game back to acknowledge the people in North Queensland. Yeah, mate. Look, honestly, I just think from that COVID period, just going from that, you know, experience and and not allowing us to get out and um, you know because of the situation at, at time um, but I just think for this year we've made up for what we you know the void that we left uh, you know considering what happened in the world but you know for everything that went on it just it just everything worked out so perfectly throughout the week from you know from the welcoming all the way through and I just think thank you to all the communities I went over to Palm Island did a smoker ceremony over there and I'm very proud and um, you know I got to experience their land their culture as well and then what they do um, you know Aboriginal people all about resilience and built on adaption and and, and you know, for people to get put on that island uh, just shows you how strong and powerful they are. They had to adapt to the lifestyle, the salt water. If even they've never seen salt water before, so you got to put that in perspective, right? So, to get put on that island and adapt, be resilient. That's Aboriginal people right there, and I can't put it into words how proud I am of that and how proud we are to be Aboriginal men. So, you know, we get to represent our family every day. I've got a newborn son. I get to represent my two daughters. You know, I'm I'm, I'm creating warriors. So. I love that aspect. The week's been perfect. I I can't put in words. I'm gonna start crying. I don't know. <laughs> a joke out of it. <clears throat> but no, mate. I yeah, gotta keep playing this game. What's the question oh. um, on, on Braden Trindle as well? He sort of came in. Cody obviously had to withdraw with an injury. He's come in playing with Nico. Wins the Preston Campbell medal. But what a great story for him this week. How did you find him all Well, I reckon when we picked him, he was going to be a, a nine. Uh, when Cody pulled out, we had no hesitation playing him, but playing him in the halves. And you know, I said to him before the game, and my message doesn't change what he what he does because he's a special player. But I said to him, when the time's right to step out of the shadows, you will. And he did it tonight. It was fantastic. I thought early on in the game, he really controlled the, the pace of the game. But there was a special effort defensively. I think it might have been in the third quarter mm. when he came up with a chase back. And those are the sort of those are the sort of plays that win games. And that's why he's got that medal around his neck. Yeah, uh, Neville Johnson here from uh, Torres Strait Islander Media Association. Uh, congratulations on the win, um, Latrell. First opportunity as captain. Uh, you seem to just take to it like duck to water. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the um, experiences during the week <coughs> as captain leading in. Oh, mate, I went through the whole week and then I think we went, what did we go to Wednesday there, eh? But <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll see what's going on here. And anyways, we sat up in the broom and that big fella announced me as captain and I couldn't put it to words. I only broke down and cried, but like I spoke about my family and how passionate I am to represent them every year, um, every day, wake up, because I do it for them. And um, But the boys turned up. I didn't know, you know, there's, with the Arsenal and the attacking, you know, we've had, we've got the best attacking team in the world and then we showed that we can defend as well and I think that was the best defensive performance I've ever seen. So, um, very happy. Um, boys turned up and I thought, you know, that I led the boys pretty well. Um, I didn't say too much. There's a lot of great leaders in our team, but um, I just think my presence was enough, and um, and the boys just play footy and had fun. That's all. I, that was my clearest message: just to play simple and, and back your abilities and, and be proud of who you are. And love your uncle. I think the other thing with leadership is you've it's a, the person who leads has always got to be authentic, um, and for us, that's what we get every day of the week. We got you know whether it's in the limelight or whether it's away from the limelight that people don't see, you get the same person day in day out, where he makes you know. Um, others more significant than him. Uh, that's the, the sign of a good leader. Charlie, you uh, said it was going to be the highlight of your of your football career, captain's team. When you, now you've gone through it, was that the correct call? We won. I'm happy. <laughs> Put it to words. I said, captaincy is, you know, you, you get picked by your peers, you get picked by your leader, coach. Um, I'm very grateful, mate, and um, I hope I continue to do great things this year. And um, you know, it set me week up, me cup full, and uh, my people behind me, my kids behind me. I don't know what else? I feel bulletproof. So let's go.
Yeah, try the last one from me. Um, uh, I posed a question to Jess uh, Skinner, uh, coach of the, the women's team, around uh, um, some attendance uh, in the Torres Strait uh, prior to an All Stars game. Um, the would love to see you guys up there as well. Are there plans afoot to maybe head up there and do a pre camp or something like that um, um, as a reward for the Torres Strait Islander people I might to on the give exposure that to, to that yeah. culture? I reckon um, so. That, so we've, we've been working for 12 months with the NRL, uh, in particular to Mana Tahu, about um, where we could take camps throughout regional um, New South Wales and Queensland, you know, including the Torres Strait. Uh, yeah, th these aren't things that happen overnight, but we've been thinking about long-term objectives. How do we grow our staff in the game? How do we grow our supporter base? How do we grow our players? And that is by taking our, our players out into the community and being able to, to, to you know, so they can they can interact with, you know, the, the kids can interact with the, you know, their heroes. Um, we can run clinics in the camp over those days. We can have coaches in there and develop them along the way. So it's just a, it's a, it's a really big job. But, you know, we're trying to work our way through it and see where it lands. But that, those those thoughts are certainly in our mind. And, and in the back of that, you know, on the culmination of that would be when I roll out of this job, there's coaches that roll in. When Luttrell rolls out of his, you know, playing position, our, our strength is so good that players just roll in off the production line and, and take his spot. You know, those are the sort of things that we're working on with the NRL. Mm -hmm.